several things to talk about today. Um, where to begin? I was driving in my car uh, and I uh, have, have a setting, uh, Apple Play. And, and so if you click that on and you're gonna make a phone call, uh, all, all of your, your phone directory is right there. And it popped up and there were my favorites, right? And on that was, was my dad's who passed away last year. And I, I got thinking, how many of us have phone numbers of family, friends that have graduated or moved on to the next dimension, uh, entered the spirit world, however you want to think of it, but we keep their phone numbers on our phone. I don't know. It's, I just think it's interesting uh, to think about how many of us do that and why do we do that? Is it, a, is it a connection we feel like if we delete that, that we're disrespecting? Is it, do we keep it there as a reminder? Uh, do we keep it there in hopes that if we dial it, there might be someone that we, we love and cherish will answer it? I, I, I talked about it a while back where I, um, this was a few months after my dad passed, we were traveling up through Wyoming and the Wind River Range. And, and Dad and I spent a lot of great time up there in the Wind Rivers and, and with my boys. And, you know, it's just been a great tradition in our family. But um, if, if, if we were going to Jackson Hall, we'd always go that back, well, we call it the back way, but down Hoback Canyon. But you go past the Wind River Range and I'd always call my dad and say, hey, I'm driving past the wind, you know? And I did it a few months after he passed, just automatic. I dialed the number, not even think, just dialed it. And then I went, oh, he's gone, you know? Anyway, interesting question there. Okay, I've heard from two, what I think are very reliable sources now, um, that, when it, when it came to the jab, um, our, our church leaders, um, particularly um, our prophet, our president, um, the, the person that they got their um, advice from was former Gover Governor Mike Levitt, who is now the president of the TAB, no, the, 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 the choir at Temple Square, I think. I can't remember what we're supposed to call them now. I know we can't, I know that Mormon isn't in there anymore. They're not the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, but maybe, I don't know, whatever they're called, he's the president of. And he was, he, under George W. Bush, he was the uh, health and human sources. Uh, I can't remember what they call it. I thought I wrote it down. Health and Human uh, Resource. Uh, he, he was in charge of that. He was on the in the in the cabinet of the president. Prior to that, I think he was the EPA guy for George W. And then and then he went from that to to this this health. And I know I know he he's a big fan of the World Health Organization. Uh, Levitt is Mike Levitt. So it would stand a reason that if you go to somebody, which I have no problem with that, uh, who would have a connection, also be part of, of your cabinet, if you will, uh, as president of the, of the choir, and you go to him and say, hey, what do you think about this? You know, should everybody get the jab and, and I'm not a huge fan of, of Mike Levitt as far as his poli politics. Um, I don't know him personally. I don't know anything about him that way. Um, I'm not a big fan of George, George W. Bush or George H. Bush. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's come out on that family that I, um, you know, I'm not a big fan of. I don't want to really get into all that right now. 
But um, let's just say under that that leadership and that idea uh, of, of the Bushes and who he surrounded himself with, everything got bigger and bigger and bigger as far as government goes and control. Uh, some of the biggest EPA things were done under under uh, you know con controlling uh, what what people could do and what they you know wouldn't necessarily uh, as a business wouldn't be a good business decision but you know the government came in and uh, under under that direction of Mike Lee uh, or advising uh, the the president to do it so anyway. Uh, and, and then, then the, the health and, and, and human resource um, director, uh, I could totally see where he would be t trusting and everything would be like, yes, to be responsible, we should all go get the jab without much other, uh, other input. Now, I know a lot of people feel like that there's, there's two things that, that are, are absolute. One is, is that the president of the church, you know, won't lead the saints astray. I, I believe that. That, astray from the gospel and the doctrine of Christ, we need to add that. Um, you, you can't just, just blanket that, in my opinion, and, and have it apply to everything. So, you have this... Uh, um, this idea that everything that they say is basically infallible and and especially as a first presidency and then as a as as 15 men a quorum quorum and the quorum of the 12 and the first presidency so that that if they come together on a decision boom you know that's 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 the way it is the the other thing that that would be aligned with that is not only would a prophet not lead us astray, everything that they receive is revelation from God. Well, if that's the case, why would you go to somebody for advice? Why would you have committees study things and then present them to the first presidency? Um, I, I, I won't tell which apostle it is, but I was privy to a, a situation when I was a mission president where uh, an apostle made the statement that information leads to inspiration. Good information leads to good inspiration. And so, so they, they, they rely on, on things. So if you're going to Mike Levitt for your advice and you trust him because of the positions he's held, um, then you know, you're, you're gonna go with it. And I'm fine with that, but really, I feel like we all have to, to, to come to that conclusion, and you guys know that. And, and I love rehashing all this stuff. It's fun for me, I enjoy it. And I know many of you are okay with it, and I know many of you just get so sick of me bringing it up. But I, 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 I heard this from, from a, re, a very reliable source, but, I, but it was only one, and I didn't really wanna say, but then again, I, I hear it from somebody else, totally different direction coming. And it was just boom, right off the tip of their tongue that just came right off that, that it, was, it was Mike Levitt who gave the prophet that, that advice that, that we should get. And then that's when they ran with it uh, on that August letter. So that's, that's something else, right? Um, okay, now, um, now that, that we've talked about that, another thing I want to talk about, okay, so in our Come Follow Me with the birth of Christ, right? And, and uh, all kinds of events about, about that. Now, some of you have been to Israel, some of you have been to Nazareth and, and seen the, 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 the Church of Annunciation and, and been in that area. There's a wonderful spirit there. And, and so, so this is all kind of leading up to the birth, but this is where the family is. And this is where they come back to after they go to Egypt, after they're in Beth Bethlehem, obviously, and then after Egypt. Now, there's a couple things we don't know. We don't know if Christ 
uh, if Mary and Joseph took Christ right from Bethlehem and went to Egypt, whether they went back to their home in, in Nazareth and then went to Egypt, uh, we do know that they, they kind of bypassed Jerusalem. Uh, coming back from Egypt, they, they bypassed Jerusalem and went, and went to, um, to Nazareth. And that's where Christ was basically grew up. But he did have a stint in Bethlehem and he had a stint in Egypt. And all those, it's so cool as you read it, look up the scriptures where that prophecy was fulfilled. He'd come from Nazareth, he'd come out of Egypt, born in Bethlehem. Those were all prophecies. So quite often we'll say that Christ came to not destroy the law, but fulfill the law. Well, he is the law. Uh, I love that that line that was in the um, uh a preview I saw. I don't know if I've actually seen it, uh, but in The Chosen, where, you know, Jesus, the character who plays Jesus, says, I am the law. I love that. But, but so he came to fulfill the prophecies about himself. The law being the Torah, the law being the, the, the Hebrew Bible, if you will, is, it, it, when he came, he, he didn't, so quite often we think, we think of the law as being the law of Moses. So you got all these rules and regulations and practices and, and do things. And Christ says he came to fulfill those. That, that's sometimes a little hard to understand, although all, a, a lot of the sacrifice and everything all pointed towards Christ. So he came to fulfill that, not to destroy it. But I also like to think of he came to fulfill the law or the scriptures about him. And, and all these things happened to him. Um, and those that were in tune in the temple and worshiped and looked forward to the Messiah, they were in tune to those scriptures as well. The apostles, as they studied the, the scriptures, they would go, ah, there it is right there. And it is, it, isn't it interesting that with a, with a couple of exceptions of, uh, is it Anna? And I can't remember the guy's name who were looking forward to it. But most others had to had to go back and go, oh, that's how that was fulfilled. That's how that happened. And I think that's how I am. Um, when when I look at a, a future event or something that's going to happen or, 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 or looking forward to something that's going to happen. And then, and then I look back and go, it already happened. And this is how this is how it happened. We, and we've talked a lot about that. On here. So I think there was a lot of that, but one song that popped into my head uh, was, was a song by James Taylor. Um, I have it called up here on my computer, but Home by Another Way. You guys read the words of this. It's, it's like you could just sing this song or recite the words and then have, have your Sunday school class or your primary class. Um, uh, so John Taylor, those magic men, the magi, some people call them wise, or oriental, even kings. Well, anyway, those guys, they visited with Jesus. They sure enjoyed their stay. Then warned in a dream of King Herod's scheme, they went home by another way. Yes, they went home by another way, home by another way. Then I love this. Maybe me and you can be wise guys, too, and go home by another way. I love this because... Uh, as the song goes on, and you can just call it, call it up, Google it, and home by another way, James Taylor. Um, it's like you you got so far with the lucky star, but now you you got to go. You, you got to figure out a different thing to get back safely. You don't want to go back to Herod, and um, you know for all kinds of reasons. Uh, Herod wanted to kill the king, right? And he killed the, the, the children in Bethlehem uh, to and under. The wise men, the magi, they didn't want to be a part of that, right? So they went home by another way. It's really a cool song. Uh, uh, but Herod's always out there, or there's always Herod's in our life. But Herod's always out there. He's got our cards on file. It's a lead pipe cinch. If you give an inch, old Herod likes to take a mile. 
It's best to go home by another way, home by another way. We got this far to a lucky star, but tomorrow is another day. See, that's a really key. We got this far to a lucky star. Now, you, you might not like to refer to as lucky. I don't care. But tomorrow is another day. Sometimes we think of our, our testimony or a spiritual experience or something that just, you know, it's kind of our anchor. But tomorrow is another day. And we need to have those reoccurring. It's like, it's like continually studying the Book of Mormon and gaining that, that witness um, that, gosh, these things really did happen. And Joseph Smith really did translate it and record it. Um, through this miraculous process and all these ancient prophets passing it down and Mormon compiling it, Moroni adding a few more things and then burying that record. It's just, it's just so cool. And, and, but we, we, you get so far on, on that original witness, but tomorrow's another day. You want that witness again. And not just to the Book of Mormon, but, but the whole plan, right? Keep a weather eye to the chart on high and go home another way. A weather eye, I like that phrase. Um, I've heard it before, aside from this song. Uh, when I was on my mission in Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and on the coast, and the, the seafarers there, the, the, the captains of boats and fishing and all that, they, you know, a weather eye is just always looking and feeling you know, what's going on out there. Uh, sometimes you, you have instruments, but quite often it's just like, it's just a little sore, something's coming in. And you're looking at the sky, you see what kind of clouds you see. You see uh, uh, the wind is huge, which direction the wind is, you know, what's going on. So keep a weather eye to the chart on high, signifying that these, these guys were astrologers, right? Uh, astronomers. Most people feel more comfortable with the word astronomer than astrologers. Uh, astrologer, more of a, uh, 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 the signs are going to dictate uh, a, a, a certain event, but, or something that's, that, 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 that you don't have any control over, that that's, that's your sign and you're going to do that. I, I personally don't think astrology is that. It, it can develop into that, but I don't think that was the, the uh, but astronomy, just studying the heavens, well, that's great. Well, this is there, this is that, that is that. But, but ast astrology would be saying, okay, this is what this means. And this is, this is an event that's going to happen. So the Magi were looking at that and and go home another way. Sometimes we just need to, to take a different approach, a different approach. Remember that cool story in the Book of Mormon where um, uh, Alma is going out and preaching and he gets to the city and it's he just gets spit upon, ridiculed, he leaves and angel comes to him and says, you know what? You need to go back. You need to go back. And so he, he went a different way into the city. And that's where he met um, Amulek. And that was that great missionary duo, Alma and Amulek. You had the recent convert, an influential person of the neighborhood. And then you had Alma, the former chief priest, and who gave that up, uh, or, or gave up the being the, the chief judge, sorry, but but he was the chief priest and he went out. But he went into the town another way. Sometimes our approaches to life and, and to all kinds of things, we just need to figure out a different way. Relationships, you know, whatever it may be. So I love that. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about today um, is this really cool, 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 really cool um, survey that was done by the Pew Research Center. So I'll, if I think of it, I'll put the link to it, but you can also Google it, and it's Pew, P-E-W, uh, Research Center. They did a poll uh, this, just this, uh, a month or two ago. This is the most fascinating poll. Some of you have heard of it. 
I can't remember where I heard this, but I, it was either Eric Steckelbeck uh, or a, 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 another, I, I can't remember where I heard about it, um, uh, The Watchman maybe, but uh, I, I went ahead and looked it up later and and found this so so th this was the this was this was the poll that was taken um uh, u.s protestants in evangelical historical black traditions especially likely to believe humanity is living in the end times okay now i'll explain this so here was the question to to you know many 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 people this, the, the survey was conducted April 11 through the 17th in 2020. And I can't remember uh, seeing how many were, were um, polled on this. But, but here's, so here's the question. Do you believe we are living in the end times? Now, you know what I've said about end times. I say the end times is the end of wickedness. It's when it's, it's the end of wickedness, it's it's when this right prior to the Savior is going to come, and then the end of wickedness. So so we're towards the end of it, but very much in it, right? So so you all the, out of the whole thing, all U.S. adults, thirty nine percent say yes, we are in the end times. Thirty nine percent. That's that's pretty interesting because I don't think end times are preached much anymore. On, on any platform uh, other than probably evangelical. So, um, and, then, and then we continue, they break it down. So Christian, 47% would believe in end times. 49 don't. Protestant, 55 to 41%. 55 saying, yes, we're in the end times. Evangelical, 63%. Mainline religion. I don't know what that would be. 31%. Historically black. So these would be the black congregations. Um, and historically black, 76%. 76%. Believe we're in the, uh, living in the end times. Other religions, 29%. Unaffiliated, 23%. Atheists, 9%. So... Even athe some atheists think, yeah, we're in, we're in it. Agnostic, 14%. So end times is different than believing in the second coming of Christ. Necessarily. Most of us attach it together, but some don't. They just say, yeah, the, the, the time of man is going to be over, and we're in the last time. Um, Republican and, and slash that lean Republican party, 45% believe we're living in the end times. Democrat, 33%. Okay, now here's, this next thing is really interesting. Um, high school or less education, uh, you, you know, you graduate from high school or less, 49%. Some college, 40%. College graduate, 27%. Isn't that interesting that the that the higher education uh, in the formal, you know, uh, realm of, of education, less belief in living in the last, the, the end times. I think this is so telling because the secular aspect of college the uh, and universities, uh, the, the running away from God or anything to do with it, that's that's affected our institutions and our beloved BYU. That uh, you know, I know Greg Madsen and others uh, quick uh, have just hammered this. You know what? The professors are products of these universities. Many many general authorities are products of these universities. Um, and, and then they go to, to BYU or they have an influence in the church, guess what? You're gonna end up with uh, more like a 27%. That's just the way it is. You're, it, you're a product of your environment in a lot of ways. Now you can buck the system and I, I get that. And I, I know we, we don't have to to cave into everything. But overall, 
most people are going to be influenced by their education, their employment, their family life, whatever it is, that's going to have an influence on how they make decisions or the things that they think about. Um, now we go into the race aspect. White, if you identify as white, 34% believe that we're living in the end times. Black, 68%. Hispanic, 41%. Asian, 33%. So, so really, really interesting uh, statistics there and polling. Um, if, if I were, it, it, we, we probably, let, let, in fact, let's do that. Let's just do a little poll in your comments and just say, if you believe it's the end time. Now, I would say on this channel, it's going to be 80 to 90%. Uh, that we're living in the end times, maybe even maybe even more, because we talk about it, and this this channel would attract that kind of conversation. Uh, if you went if you went to a um, oh, Taylor and Tyler, remember those guys? The Come Follow Me. I remember when they covered some of the sections in the Doc Doctrine and Covenants, and and they just like uh, you know end times. They were not having any part of that. I would say the people that really enjoyed them. Um, and I would say, generally speaking, uh, if I just use our ward and our stake, and um, I, I'm, I know a little bit about the, the personality of, of our ward and stake, just with callings I've had. Uh, and then overall, I would say we fall very much into the, 20, the high 20% that uh, uh, that I feel like people are that in the that are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. I would say twenty eight, twenty nine percent of the people really feel like we're living in the end times right now. Now, there's another question that that I want to talk about, and some of you might think that that's really low because you know we have this this community, but but when you really think about it. You, you 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 pretty much I think have to go by actions of people, not not just um, you know in a class or talking. Uh, you know what are they really doing and how are they preparing and what's going on? And I'm not saying that, that it's like about food storage and that, but, but the, although that would be a part of it. But just just kind of the idea that hey, shiz is going to hit the fan and I better be ready end times because the end times always include earthquakes, pestilence, famines, destruction, wickedness, you know, all that is part of the end The you know, it ramps up right before Christ comes. That's, that's a prophecy. If you say it's a different way, I'd like to hear it. But, um, okay. So, so we have that. That's really interesting. Now, um, a similar question, but it's different. Here's the question. Do you believe Jesus will return to the earth someday? Just someday, okay? Um, all U.S. adults, um, it's 55% it's, uh, of all adults feel like Jesus will come. Christians, 75%. So 20% think, no, he's not coming, of Christians. Isn't that crazy? Protestant, 82%. Evangelicals, 80, or 92%. Sorry, I got to put these on. Uh, mainline, 64%. Historically black uh, religions, 86%. Catholic, 63%. Other religions, 18%. Unaffiliated, 20%. Um, atheists, 1%, which is interesting. <laughs> Agnostic, 8%. And nothing in particular, you know, they don't associate with anything. 29% of those think that Jesus will come to earth someday. Republicans, 69%. Democrat, 45% believe that Jesus will come on earth someday. High school or less. Okay, here we go. 61% think Jesus will return someday. Some college, 57%. And college graduates, 48%.
So less than half of college graduates think that Jesus is going to come again. Isn't that just fascinating? Whites, 53%. Black, 77%. Hispanic, 55%. And Asian, 39% believe that Jesus will someday return to the earth. So, um, now, here's... This one here is, is slightly different, but it's, it's really, really interesting. Um, one out of 10 U.S. adults believes Jesus will definitely or probably return in their lifetime. Now, this one, okay, well, l let me read what the statistics are, and then I'll tell you what I think the, that would be within the church. Okay, so U.S. adults, 10%. 10% say yes, Jesus will definitely or probably return in, in their lifetime. Now, you know, lifetime is an interesting thing. When you get older, you know, you're like, have you ever gone, you know, I, I might have talked about this before, but, but occasionally I'll think, I probably won't ever need to buy another pair of, of hunting boots this might be my last pair, <laughs> you know, or, um, you know, I, I, I've had this pickup truck for a few years and I just love it. And I'm, I'm just on the cusp of thinking, gosh, is, is this going to last me? You know, and, and, and you obviously play in the, 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 the average, you know, the law, the, the, the law of averages here, because, you know, you could drop over dead at any any moment or get hit by a bus or whatever. And um, so you, you never know when you're gonna go. But if you if you average it out, I don't I don't even know what it is now. Is it is it mid seventies maybe? Is it climbed up? Maybe uh, I, I don't know what the average uh, death age is. I bet it's coming down because of all the deaths because of did you hear about that? There's a channel. I, it's not a channel. It's it's a web. Uh, it's a it's a website. Not a web. Yeah, I get an email. Okay, sorry. And it's the Jewish Voice. The Jewish Voice. I get an email, and they had this whole series of all these young people that had just died of natural causes. And one was this cadet, uh, Air Force Academy. He played on the football team. Just going to a class collapsed dead, deader than a doornail. There was a flight attendant, same thing. There were kids in high school, same thing. This article lists all the, all the you know, several. There's there's whole channels that just go with un, un, unexpected deaths or something that I've looked at a, f a few times. It's really interesting. <clears throat> Got off on a sidetrack, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, all U.S. adults, only 10% believe that Jesus will probably or definitely return in their lifetime. Christian, 14%, all of Christians. Protestant, 16%. Evangelical, 21%. So it's it's appearing that most people think it's, it's going to be way, you, you know, in the future. It's going to happen, but, but it's going to be in the future. Uh, Catholic, 7% unaffiliated, religiously unaffiliated, 3%. Republican, 12%. So there's a higher of Republicans that believe um, than all U.S. adults by two, two percentage points. So 12% of Republicans think that Jesus will probably return in their lifetime or, or, or will definitely, either one. Democrat, 8%. High school or less. Okay, here we go. This is really interesting. High school or less, 14% uh, education. Some college, 10%. And college graduates, only 5% believe that Christ is going to return in their lifetime. If I were a betting man, I would say that the, 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 the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, if, if this poll was taken and honestly answered, I would say we would hover somewhere between 5 and 10% of, of members who believe that Christ will come in their lifetime. And this, this would be adults, 18 and older. So 18, you know, 
but I, I don't think there's very many in the church that really, really, really believe that Christ will come in their lifetime. I do, and I think he'll come in my lifetime if I live to the age of man, okay? that That's just my thought on it, uh, just the way things are going and how things are. I, I don't really, um, I love looking at timelines and I love trying to figure out things, but mine is more, <clears throat> it's kind of how the, the whole jab thing went. Sue was really focused on all the evidence and it was mounting, you know, of, of, of how dangerous it could be. And mine was almost strictly just the feel of the force, the, 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 the forcing and the advertising and the pushing and the, and the, and the compelling you to do it and this and that. It was so strange. And I just went, this cannot be good. This cannot be good. And, and I approached the, 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 either the second coming, the end of times, all that, more that way than I do, um, you know, calculating and mathematics and, and, and all that. I do look at signs and I look at if, if there's any possible way they could have been fulfilled. And, and if they, like, like just, just one quick thing that, that Christ says he'll come to his temple quickly. You know, you could say that so many times. From a baby, he, he, his parents took him to the temple quickly. He, he, he was there. He was in his father's home. Uh, the Kirtland Temple, he came quickly. Um, so, so there's... Here, here's another thing. And I think this is really important. Because a prophecy has been fulfilled, like, like when President Hinckley said that um, the prophecy of Joel had been fulfilled, that doesn't mean it's never going to happen again. It's just that it, 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 what, what he said, what, what Joel prophesied of, President Hinckley said that in a conference from the pulpit that it was, that this, this, this prophecy had been fulfilled. Um, but being fulfilled doesn't mean that it's never going to happen again. It, I, I hope I'm making sense of that because, um, there, there could be multiple fulfillments of that, okay? Anyway, so um, just to finish this, so the answer, believe that Jesus will return to earth, uh, or excuse me, will Jesus uh, definitely slash probably return in their lifetime? So we ended with college graduates, only 5% believe that that, that will happen. And I think that permeates all through the church. Uh, now, now we go through the races. White, 8%. Black, 19% believe that they'll come, that Christ will come in their lifetime. Hispanics, 14%. And Asians, 8%. So um, there's a lot to this study. It's really, really interesting. There's, there's some kind of cool um, um, observations from this. So I'll, I will find the link and I'll put it on. Um, I'll put it on the, uh, in the comment section uh, for, this, for this study and, and this polling. Uh, but if, again, everything that I try to uh, come through this channel is through the lens of a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And and how how things are influenced, um, and we as a church, we don't live in a bubble. Everyone is affected as a as a uh, as a cumulative group. We're we're molded by our experiences and our education and all those kind of things. And then, and then we bring all that to the table. And, and I think this is why we have seen so many leftist ideas uh, come into the church in recent years. It's because as, as young people get educated, and this, is, this poll just tells it, tells it like it is, the higher the education, 
the less belief in God, the less belief that Christ is going to return, the less belief that Christ is going to return in your lifetime, and the less belief that there's really an end end of times. Um, I know I know guys that have been heavy duty callings and continue to have them. You know, patriarch, mission president, temple president, those kind of things, that type of thing. That we're not. There's so much more that has to happen. It's not going to happen in my lifetime and probably not my kid's lifetime and probably not my grandkid's lifetime. And then and then in all reality, you know, who knows? Um, a lot of it is the influence of, of the education. So, so you think, well, so dumb people or people that aren't educated, um, they're simpletons and they just are gullible. They're gullible. And they believe in this kind of thing. This is this is such a dangerous thought, uh, especially as we study the New Testament and we think of who Christ called as his disciples, his apostles, and and who he gave authority to, and um, what was what was able to be accomplished. And they were actually very brilliant, very brilliant. You look at the early membership of the of the church and the men and women that were pretty young, a lot of them, but, but the minds that came together, you know, the Pratt brothers and, and Oliver Cowdery, Sidney Rigdon, these were not, Sidney was older, but these others were younger, but brilliant. I, I kind of think of Sidney Rigdon as, as, as kind of like the Benjamin Franklin of, of Mormonism because um, Benjamin Franklin was older with all these younger guys, you know, these patriots and, and independents and, and free thinkers, if you will. And, and, and yet the same kind of thing, the geniuses that, were, that, were, that came together for the founding of the United States of America, the geniuses that were brought together uh, for the restoration of the gospel, it's, it's so cool. But quite often, they weren't um, geniuses in the sense of this, this formal education, right? A lot of self-taught, a lot of self-taught. Joseph Smith's a perfect example of that. Um, but, but brilliant, brilliant in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, we use the phrase critical thinking, not critical race theory and all that, but critical thinking where you can uh, have some original thought and, and process things and see things a little bit out of the box, you know, out of the norm. Um, th this, is, this is what, uh, in my opinion, drove all this, uh, was, was this type of education. So, so if we think that only those that come through this process of of these very leftist professors and individuals, and then you get your stamp, your degree, and then and then you you continue to regurgitate all this stuff that really is secular uh, and points towards not believing in a God, not believing in an influence of a higher power, not believing in Jesus Christ, not believing in miracles, not believing in. Um, in, in, in something that would be called the, that we would call the atonement and, and believing that it's more about what, what we do as individuals and only what we do. And we are a product of what we accomplish. The Lord, yes, he'll bless us based on our righteousness, you know, with financial blessings and things like that. Um, this is this is all part of the of the more the intellectual side, in my opinion. It's just my opinion, but but now we see um, quick media did a good thing on on the, uh, Greg Madsen on on Deseret Book and the and the you know the books and the and the the videos you can watch on you know on the rainbow flag and all that, <laughs> but you can see why. It's all run by a bunch of intellectuals. And, and so what, what do we have? College graduate, only 5% think that Christ is going to come in their lifetime. Um, what was the other one? Um, let 
Jesus will return to earth one day. High school, 61%. Call it some college, 57%. And college graduates, 48%. It, it just, it's the lowest part. Here's the, do you believe we're in the end times? High school or less, 49%. Some college, 40%. College graduate, 27%. So there you go. Uh, the higher the education, the less belief you have in in Jesus. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> and this is formal education. I'm all for education. I am. I think we should be studying constantly and learning. You know, wh whether it's with our hands, our minds, our heart, learning it. Uh, uh, I was going to say a trade, but. It, 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 Anything, anything, just look, just constantly learning is, is awesome. Education is awesome. But we've equated that now in our society to going into debt, to go to a traditional college or a university and, and just being um, programmed to think and do the way this leftist uh, infiltration uh is, is, is spewing out and, and then we just become a product of it. All right, I'm repeating myself, sorry about that. Okay, that's it. Um, I'm gonna have a, uh, another visit with, with John Hewlett here probably next week sometime. Uh, he's been traveling the globe. I, I wouldn't say the globe, but he's been doing a lot of traveling and uh, has a lot of cool information about uh, nitric oxide, cardio miracle, the jab, all those things. So look forward to that coming up. So God bless. Thank you. Thank you for all your comments and, and support of this channel. You're amazing folks and uh, uh, just contribute so much to to our family, to our situation, all your comments and and uh, everything. It's, it's just a blessing to be part of this cow community. So we'll talk to you soon. Bye.